been working on a little something with uh, uh, braided mylar. There's a few different layers on here and a little tactic of unraveling a couple of layers. So I thought I'd share it with everyone. I've been smashing the kelts. No springers yet. Right, so an alloy tube, bit of silicon tubing on the back, and this is the the thin braided mylar. So I only want this to sit underneath. This is the base layer. I'm gonna try and do this video quick and fast. Down. It's really quick way of doing a body. And I'm just sorting out the, some thread here. So some red thread, red floss, whatever you want. I think this is a quite flossy. Let's grab it. This point, I would super glue, glue or varnish, whatever you want to do there, let it dry. But <clears throat> I've got one here already. I did just a wee minute ago. So now what I'm going to feed on is this pearl. Which I should tie it on first, I think. Make it easier. This braided mylar stuff's one of the quickest ways to make a body I've found. A good texture. Normally just a black and orange bucktail, something like that, on my local river where we fish. And the tea. Right, so we've got that nailed down. So now we've got a uh, pearl bla braid, the larger stuff. So I've just cut a little section and I'm going to make this one a little longer so it's over the yellow. Nice and easy. I'll have to do the same again. Right, at this point, I'm going to add some super glue. Just hold it all in place. Right, right, look at this stuff here. I just run my finger around it dead fast. Tidies it all up, it dries really fast. There we go. 
not sticky now. Now, the third layer. Oh, a bit too long. And this is large braided mylar. And we are going to be unravelling the top two layers. So now we start to tie the fly. There's nothing special about the fly. You can tie it in any colour you want. This time of year, to be honest, you're probably best off with black and yellow. Let's come back. A good bite. a nice wee taper to sit on. Right, so I'm going to use orange on the bottom. So we get a bit of bucktail. Just a little bit. This fly is going to be black, yellow and orange. Tail, particularly all the, the horrible looking hairs, the short ones. Grab it, pull the under far out, see what it looks like. Now, yeah, this is the underside of the fly, I'm just going to tie it on the top. I'm going to start about there, just so it's hanging about in the hook. straight, a couple of good turns, nice and tight there, so we turn the fly right over now, right. I'm going to use yellow bucktail now, you can use any colour or furs you want, to be honest, the fish don't know, salmon, I know fussy, Especially spring salmon, you just need to get in front of one. End of the day, if it's in the mood, it's going to take it no matter what. Any fly will catch a fish. Right, so the yellow bucktail now, little pinch on the top. I'm going to make this fly quite big because I think the tea's at like 11, 12, 13 feet just now. I'm supposed to be fishing in a couple of days. Nail a mouth, but it may be written off, so. But I'll tie some big flies for it, you never know. Right, let's get it all nice and sit straight on the top where you want it. Can you see, guys? Right, the start. Spacing, good spacing. <coughs> Cheers. Right. Now, I think this is some kind of sheep. It's nice long fibres. Some bushy. I like quite a lot. You're only really using the end, so I'm taking quite a big piece here. Do the same again, hold it tight up the top there and take it all the really short stuff. Have a look at it. If it's, if it's a wee bit too blunt, I tend to stretch a couple out, give it a little Pull and taper. 
Oh, yeah, that's looking not too bad. Quite a big fly. Right there, I think. Because this is a uh, not bucktail, it can sit on the top of the bucktail rather nice. So you can get like a little band. If I set it on right. Let's have a little look. Push it down there, I think. Just roll the stuff around with your nails a little bit. Don't put it on too tight till you get it right. And get it a wee bit tighter. Right, everything's where I want now. So now I'm going to chop off all the excess. I just put a little a tub underneath with all my waste, just sit it underneath, pull the fly over the top, chop it all off. I'm not a professional fly tire by any means. I like to create my own flies and have some new ideas. The end of the day, it's not the fly that catches the fish. It's all to do with luck. And fish where there is fish. Right. Now I put a couple of threads over here. Oh, oh bad. The end of the world, though. Need to get one of these little tools for uh, threading your bobbin. Do it rather quick, especially if you've got porcelain tips or ceramic tipped uh, bobbins. So we're back on track. Let's hold them. A good catching again. Right, at this point, I'm going to add some super glue into the end of these first because they're all open. And you want them to stay in, fly to stay together. Super glue on there. Here's a cocktail stick. A big bit heavy on it. Get it all over, all the thread. Let it soak in and force it in there. Let's ensure it's no kind of bits. Just come up over the, the super glue and take some of the excess off now. I just use my finger, you use a wee bit of rag or feather or something, guys. Let me see, waste it.
get up a nice wee cone up here. Right. So I'm going to be adding some jungle cock. We all know what that is. It's up to you if you put it on. It's an expensive fly at the end of the day when you start adding this stuff. It was £100 for one tiny little cape. Does a fly need it? No. Most of the tubes I tie, I just don't bother. You tie 10 tubes with uh, no jungle cock, just bucktail, pretty fast. Especially if you're fishing deep, kind of lose a lot, smash them up on the bottom. So I'm just sorting out the, the bucktail now. Not the bucktail, sorry, the, the jungle cock. I'm talking nonsense. Prepare them. So I like, I kind of like them just pointing up a tiny little bit. So one, two, three. That goes again. So can let you guys see. Just pointing up just that tiny little bit. One, two, not too tight there. So you can see your lens and stuff. That's pretty close. And hold it tight. And go back. Some people fold these back. I don't because I'm going to super glue the whole head and then I'm going to use black varnish to hide any little imperfections. Finish up a nice wee cone here. So we'll get to about here. Some more super glue. Sure, that's cut the uh, jungle cock. It's easy to rip out. Don't do the whole lot. Three coating all over. Same with the excess again. Rub it tight into the thread, it dries just a bit instantly when you do this, guys. So you can get varnish on it straight away. So I just take my finger up, make sure it's set it right in, and come forward a wee bit with this. No bother with wet varnish, I just go around once. Make sure it's tight when that glue sets. Right, uh, black varnish is, would be on the head, but the trick here now is get a cocktail stick. Uh, just go gentle because you don't want to get the under layer. There's three layers here, so you're just talking the top layer, top two layers. You just start working your way around, just nice and gentle, it all starts to unravel. And uh, I've, I've noticed that in the water, it, it, dis, it displaces a lot more water. These are stiff bristles, and uh, they're spiralled. It doesn't make the, the fly turn in the water because of the, the way the wings are. The long wing in the top and the short wing in the bottom, it makes the fly swim true. But it's just something I've thought about. I just unraveled, tied one fly on, and it unraveled by itself, and uh, it gave me the idea, and then I tied a couple up, 
and I was using them on Isle of Mouth a couple of weeks ago and I was getting loads of bangs from the Celts and it just gave me the idea to make a fly that still had the braided body underneath so you've got a body under there but now that's quite springy you know you don't have to go crazy when you cast it it's going to unravel itself so it just gives it a the water's going to react differently it's a different looking fly it's nothing new the colors are nothing special just a wee idea I came up with thought I'd share with everyone and the last wee thing here is black varnish I might even put a coat of uh, clear over the top makes it look a bit better just get it to soak all the way in I've not got a name for this style or anything like that. I'm not really much into naming flies of that. To be honest, I just like fishing and I'm tying flies and I'm coming up with some ideas. I always try and create crazy flies. I get laughed at everywhere I go with my flies, so it's quite amusing. But I'm catching fish guys so it's all good. Don't get any on the feathers, etc. Well, that's my idea there with the three layers of braid. Get two unraveled. It's a it's a really different texture of fly, and it's going to react different in the water. Um, another one uh, and a black orange and blue that was a good spring fly uh, a couple other wee things I've come up with as well guys just nice and simple this one I was getting a bit creative I think I maybe had a couple too many whiskies there but it will catch fish at the end of the day won't it Alright, thanks for watching guys. Cheers, tight lines.